Because it looks like Dookie. Hey, what's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another Transformers action figure review on the Transformers The Last Night Movies Premiere Edition Deluxe Class Autobot Squeaks. If you're trying to get your Transformers figures, you can get the big, 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 big. Get your big, badass toys at bigbadtoystore.com. Click the link in the description below. So we get a new little Autobot over here, looking like he's supposed to be the comic relief of the film, right? You always have to have a comic relief Autobot somewhere in these Bay former movies. But anyway, on the top we get an Autobot symbol right over there, and it looks like Squeaks has a lot of weapons, so I'm excited for that. And on the very back, you can see some product shots over here. We get a product shot of Drift. Now on the side, you can see Squeaks, and it says Autobot Squeaks, Autobot Amigo. So we get a Latino Autobot. And then on the top, you can see Bumblebee, Optimus, and Drift as usual, and then not much more at the bottom. All right, let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's Squeaks out of the packaging, and I really like this figure a lot. I am very, very happy with this thing to my surprise. At first, I actually kind of thought it would be, you know, kind of like annoying, cutesy little thing, but I really dig this figure. It's very fun. It reminds me of G1 Optimus Prime in a number of ways, which really makes me geek out playing with this thing, because I really do dig it. There's a lot of display options here. A uh, huge fun factor with this piece, man. It's just a lot of fun to have. Everything that he comes with is on his person right here, so you don't have to put things aside. There's storage for everything, so I think that's great. I really dig it. This little flat boat. Nope, it sticks out a little bit right there. Okay, just getting a little OCD with it. But anyway, let's get a closer look at Squeaks. Now, I like the figure a lot, but I do have little gripes. For instance, there's no real legitimate storage or hideaway storage for this giant gun that he comes with. You can just port it in to either this port right here on this side. You get another port over here, and you get two ports at the top, so you can have him uh, blasting away as he's driving off, you know, so you can do that. Uh, and it looks pretty good. You're not getting any kind of crazy detail as far as paint goes, but the sculpted detail is quite awesome. I really dig it, you know? All these Gatling guns and just a whole mess of made-up stuff, or maybe not so made-up stuff. Some of it looks somewhat realistic, right? But it's just a bunch of different things just, you know, just clunked together. Then you do have this back trailer piece, which I really like how it connects to the scooter. Uh, you get this ball peg right here, and, and it stays in there. You just flap that down, and I think this is pretty awesome. I really dig this a lot. You can go ahead and lift this up right here. You get some cannons right there, looking really nice. Very nice looking silver paint on them too. I like that a lot. That looks really good. You can see those little rings inside right there. It's pretty sweet. And it's articulated. You get hinges right there, hinges right here. You can split them apart. You can have them move independently from each other. So that's cool. So you can still have that attached and have them firing away if you want to do something like that. And then you can open this whole thing up right here. Pull this away. Pull this away. And then move these to the side and you have this docking bay, This, which again, uh, very much reminds me of Optimus Prime. And just flap that down, flap that down, and you can just put everything down to the side like that. And I just think that is awesome. And it looks really good too. And you can go ahead and take the scooter or the moped or whatever and just put it right there. So that's it. Get that facing forward. So yeah, you can get that little docking bay action going on. And if you didn't want this off to the side, you could port it into the toolbox like that, you know. So, you also get this arm right over here. Again, very much reminding me of Optimus, right? Optimus had something like this going on. And you get articulation on this. You could rotate this side to side. It hinges at the bottom. It hinges right here. We get another hinge right over here. It swivels right up here. Uh, it doesn't swivel at this joint, though. And you get this little hand right here that's on a ball joint. It's very soft material. So you could rotate that around, move it up and down as you wish. You also get the toolbox on this side. So moving this out of the way, you get some nice red paint right here. Very good. Open that up. And you can see that you get this large arm for his robot mode. And then you also get his little uh, handle, fake handlebars that are also for his robot mode. So that reminds me of the hands of Optimus Prime. And I love that you can store them. I used to always store the hands of Optimus Prime in the cab so I wouldn't lose them. So having storage for these pieces is very smart, I think. And I appreciate that a lot. Very well thought out. Now looking closely right here, you can see we get some nice details sculpted in there. You can see like we get some tracks right over there. 
And we get some dookie, you know. Is this like another, uh, it's supposed to be dirt and everything, but it kind of does look a little bit poo-poo. Hey, a Latino Transformer associated with poo? Hey, 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 that's supposed to be me, guys. Hey, well, you know, there's enough poop for everybody, so, hey. Anyway, we get some sculpted detail on the inside of this toolbox. Very cool. I like it. Looks very good. Then yeah, you can see the sculpted detail throughout on this thing. It looks very good. I'm very pleased with it. It's awesome. And it does have wheels at the bottom too. Totally worth mentioning that you get these clear baby blue wheels right there. And I think that's awesome. They roll very nicely. So looking closely at Squeaks, you can see that we have some nice tires right over here. I like that we have some nice silver paint and digging this. And again, I do actually really like seeing the brown. You can even see the brush uh, pattern in these strokes right here. So somebody did paint this with a brush and I think that's very cool. I do like that. Nice silver paint right here. We get some more translucent baby blue plastic. So I guess those are going to be his eyes in alt mode. And then you can see he has this very nice kickstand right here, which I like very much. It helps him stand, so that's really good. Uh, I don't like that you can see the product number right over here from the factory. That's a little bit of a bummer, but I'm sure you could just, you know, use some rubbing alcohol or, you know, an X-Acto knife and scrape that off there. But eh, I prefer not being there. Nice clean deco for the Autobot symbol. And then we get some nice silver right here for the very back. Looking pretty cool. I'm liking it. So yeah, good looking alt mode. I like it. Looks really good. And the seat's all brown right over here. And as far as articulation goes, you can swivel this side to side. It doesn't affect this tire though, so you have to move them separately. So you can move this, and then you have to turn the handles along with it so that it matches if you wanted to get that kind of thing going on. And then I was trying to think about uh, figures that I think you know would fit this, and it's kind of tricky. I'm thinking like five inch or four inch scale figures. I did get a picture of the Carl Grimes figure on this thing, and I did get the four inch uh, Spider-Man, right? over here Ooh, figure review foreshadowing so yeah uh, as far as six inch figures goes yeah it's not really anything's gonna match right over here and then to demonstrate how well this rolls whoa yeah he's not gonna last very long without falling over if you straighten up the tires though it'll go a little bit farther but yeah very very cool I like the scooter and I just want to demonstrate when putting squeaks on this I like to put the rear tire like in this little groove right over here I feel like he's just a little bit more stable right there so I rest the tire in there all right I'm ready to get this guy transformed will you take us away bumblebee okay so first I like to start off with lifting this back piece right here and we're going to go ahead and move the head out and then rotate this around and then move this little eye section up and then collapse the goggles or the eyes together and then form his head and we'll leave that aside right there and then we're going to take the tires and separate this whole piece right here and what I want to do is turn the, ooh, I'm gonna collapse the kickstand and then rotate this around 90 degrees. And then we have the hands or the shoulders. They're gonna come outward like that. This is gonna rotate around. And then we're gonna take this piece. This is going to separate and rotate around and then have that lean forward and up like so. And leaving the arms outward like that. And then we're going to collapse this together right here. And this whole thing's going to just accordion in on itself and squeeze in like that. And then you get this little port right, whole port, and then port right over there, and then just tab that into place. And that'll, and then you can go ahead and move the head forward, and then move that helmet down. And then you can move the tires to the side like this. Well, you want to kind of have them facing forward a little bit, make sure that this is all level. And then you pretty much have squeaks going right over there. Uh, but we do need to add his faux handlebars right there. And they just port right in like so. And right in like so. And there we have squeaks in his robot mode. And it's a fairly decent looking robot mode. I gotta say it's not my favorite part of the figure. But I think that's part of me not being totally familiar with the character yet. But we do have accessories that help make this guy a little bit more amped up. As you know we can weaponize him. So we'll talk about that in just a second. So I like how the face looks on this guy. He has these big spectacles right over here looking very cool. And you can see the left one is kind of overlapping the right. So that's not bad. And I like his helmet. It looks like a motorcycle helmet. Kind of reminds me of a World War II Stormtrooper helmet a little bit, but I think that's supposed to be a motorcycle helmet. Then you can see all the brush strokes right over here on the top of the helmet looking really good. He has this nice hole right over there from some battle damage. 
and you can turn his head side to side a little bit right here. I tend to have the helmet flip up sometimes, but so that's kind of expressive, like, what? What'd you say? I don't know, it's kind of neat, so I think that's pretty cool. I do like that. And then you can, I'm just going over the articulation as I'm showing the details right here. Uh, but this is actually not uh, the part of the figure itself or part of the plastic or anything. That's just a pin, you know, for that you rotate this piece on. But yeah, here's the faux handlebars right there. You could rotate these. He does have shoulder joints that move in and out. And you can rotate them so you can move the arms up and down too. And they wiggle on the inside right over there up and down as well. So you can move it like that. It's pretty neat. And then the tires move in and out a little bit. So that's... Oh, all the articulation right there, but you can see some more brush strokes right there, more poo poo, you know. So bathed in shark, this one is little shardabot. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna start calling them shardabots, right? Looks like a shardabot to me. But yeah, there we go. Some more of that deco right there. Not too bad. Nice dry brushing. It's not actually deco, right? It's just dry brushed. Uh, paint, but yeah, it looks pretty good. I like it. You know, I, I like seeing that variety. If it was just one solid baby blue figure, I don't think I would like this as much as I do. But yeah, I think it looks really good like this. I think it's pretty sweet. Now, he doesn't really roll. I mean, you can push him along, but he doesn't really roll so much. Now, he does have his extendo arm right over here. And what I really like about this is you can go ahead and take off uh, this right arm. And there is uh, a way where you can actually port this into the trailer, uh, the little part that connects to the trailer anyway. You can just port that right in there. So he's got a little dingy. Uh, I put it in the wrong port. Uh, not this one, but the gray hole right there. Wrong hole. Okay, that's what she said. But anyway, just port that in right there. And it's about as long as the kickstand. So there you go. Now he can stay. And you can see it there just a little bit. And now you check it and it's not going to come out. So yeah, I like piece storage. If there's going to be parts forming, I like having storage for those parts. So I think that looks pretty good. Anyway, you can add this new arm. You can see that you get a port sticking out right there. And it just goes into the hole. And boom, like that. And very nice large mechanical arm right there too. A lot of nice little sculpted details in it and everything, so I think that's pretty sweet. I like that. And it gets a little gappy right there on the bottom of it, but the hand itself looks pretty good. I'm pleased with that. Not too bad. And then we can go ahead and have him hold this big old gun right here. And this is... Eh, the hand is actually made out of very soft material, so I, feel, I wish that gripped a little better. But there you go. Now he's all fully armed, going pachoosh. He is wanting to fall forward on me a little bit. Just need to get the tires... Uh, you know, lined up correctly. You have to just balance them right. Maybe this handle right over here that's causing the problem. Yeah, it totally was the handle causing the problem because, yeah, he needs to lean back to make up for that weight. So, yeah, that looks a little bit better. And he rolls. Oh, yeah, this thing's too heavy. He's going to fall over if you try rolling him around. So now I need to find another place to put this thing. Um, there you go. Nope. Okay, well, you're going to have to put it in the toolbox. Yeah, that, that's the best place for it then. Now, going back to this thing, uh, you can fold this right here. And I do like how you get this little gun right here on the back. So if you wanted this to be like a weapon instead of just a hand... You know, I think that's pretty neat, so you can have them armed up like that. But you want to rotate this, fold this down, collapse this, and then take the, move that forward and then push these in right here. And then you can move this down and push this, and you want to keep all this open so that you can go ahead and tab this into the back of Squeaks. So that's the port it's going to go into, and now he has an armed backpack. And you can just go ahead and hinge these up like that. And now he's fully loaded and ready to blast away some Deceptor Creeps. So I think that is cool. It's a little bit long, you know, but really, I still think it's really nice. I, I dig this a lot. I think that's pretty awesome. One thing I didn't mention is with this arm right here, the only articulation you get is just a swivel right over there. So it's pretty much the same as his strong hand right there. Anyway, measuring the height of this Squeaks, you can see that he's very short, standing only just under three and a half inches tall. And then comparing Squeaks to a couple other The Last Knight figures, we have the Voyager class Optimus Prime and the Deluxe class Bumblebee. And you're seeing this and seeing that, and like, oh, they cost the same, well, that's ridiculous. But I mean, really, I mean, this whole trailer thing, you know, it adds up to about the same height, right? So you stack them together, boom, there you go fixed. And then comparing Squeaks to your average six-inch scale figure, here he is next to the Marvel Legends big-time no-letdown Spider-Man. 
Bow! Yeah, so very cool little figure. I do like this Squeaks. Look at them all armored up and everything. I don't know. I think it's a fun figure. I'm very pleased with it. It is a little short guy, but there's a lot of stuff going on in here. And like I said earlier, a lot of fun with this guy. High fun factor with the figure. I do recommend it. I hope I end up liking the character, so I have to take that back. Watch the movie first, and then um, after you watch the movie, you can decide whether or not you like the character enough to pick up his figure form, you know? But is it a good toy? Is it a good figure? Yes, it is. I do like it a lot. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the review. Let me know what you think of the figure. If you have not subscribed and you want to see more Shardimus Prime videos coming your way, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you're already subscribed and you have not hit the notification bell, be sure to hit that notification bell so you see immediately when the latest Shardimus Prime video is posted. If you'd like to see a photo gallery of images along with the Shardimus Prime tunes that I have available on ShardimusPrime.net, you can check them out over there. Link below. And you can follow me on the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Links to all that stuff down below. I'll catch you guys later. Peace! Posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures every day. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. I'm posing action figures. It's okay. Crispy. We're shot, we're shot, we're shot in your face. I said, we're shot, we're shot, we're shot in your face. I said, we're shot.